Hey everybody, Rafferty Refined, everything you need to refine your skills as a chalk painting artist. So today we're going to be covering blending. There are so many different techniques and styles for blending. However, today we're going to be covering a really useful hack. Now you can use this if you're blending two similar colors or two opposite colors. Today I'm going to be blending black and white, so two polar opposite colors, and we will see how um, with this hack they can be very seamless. So let's get going. We have Dixie Belle fluff, caviar, and our clear glaze effects by General Finishes. I'm using a Wooster Pro to blend today, so that'll be kind of fun and different. We're just gonna make sure to give all of our products a really good stir, and then we're all set to get started. We start off by applying the glaze in the corner first. Just a light application, nothing too heavy. And then we move into applying the black, and the white right next to the black. And then we're going to take the Wooster and just start dabbing it in. And so we use the different corners and the sections of the Wooster to bend and mesh the colors together. And that's what creates the blending look. When I see you, my heart starts racing, but I don't know if I like this chasing and playing and waiting around. It's a shame that my hands start shaking. Forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on refining your skills as a chalk painting artist. Let's continue on with our project. Okay, so not always will our original plan work out. Even though I do like the way that this blending technique is carried out. I, I like the way that it performs. Um, I've done it before on this dresser here. The reason why this blending technique worked on this dresser was mainly because it was a bigger surface for this tool. So what I'm running into is um, there are itty bitty corners for a really big tool. Um, I'm doing this because the client wanted um, this specific piece to actually match this dresser. Um, however, it's not working. Not to worry, I'm still going to show you how easy it is to blend with this glaze. So even if you do have to change up your technique or your tools, um, which these kind of curveballs do happen. So this is actually kind of a good thing. You got to see the blending technique with the booster, even though it was a bit of a mess. And now we're going to go on and do some blending with a brush. So let's finish our project. So we start with a light amount of glaze as before, and then I'm gonna take a tiny bit of paint on this brush and apply it in the corner. And then add some white. And here we go. So I'm pulling the black down to the white and then bringing the white up to the black until I find what kind of works as far as a shade. And then I work lightly with my brush to smooth it out. The best part about the glaze is that it gives you a lot of working time with your paint. And so it acts as a substitute for the water, which allows you to have all the blending time that you need to work those colors together the way that you would like. And you don't have to worry about re-wetting the paint and you really get a good blend. The deal. 
that the glaze does is, you know, gives you a lot of working time and it helps those um, colors bind really well together. So when the paint dries, it, you know, it creates a nice um, uniform blending look. So um, after everything's dried, what we're going to do is kind of match the white and kind of crisp everything off. And then um, I'm going to go around and do a little bit more detail work and we'll wrap up this project. Okay, so we're just going to go in and tie in some of the black with the blending. So when you're working with detail brushes, if you're just getting started, don't worry so much about you know, picking the right ones and being intimidated by that. I find what works well for the projects is just like a big brush, you know, just how much I'm gonna need um, to push down on something and how much it's gonna allow me to um, keep the paint on the surface, the size, and also, uh, you know, getting into corners and details, those kinds of things. So I have a selection and so I always just grab what I think might work and narrow it down from there. So let's go. So I'm using the angle brush to get into the crevices and drag the paint along the frame. The frame is a bit narrow along the edges and the top, so I'm choosing to stay with this angle brush. If we get a little paint outside the lines, it's okay. We can go back in with another brush with white and clean it up a little bit. But other than that, I'm getting great coverage and little details like this don't take that long. This took me about an hour and it really makes a difference to your piece. Time for a little gilding wax along those edges. Now with this brush, I cut the tip down a little bit so it's more dense with its application, which makes it perfect for gilding wax. All right, so here's the finished look. So even though we ran into that little hiccup um, with that Wooster blending, we were still able to accomplish quite a good blend because we had the glaze. That is the awesome hack to getting colors to blend beautifully together. We can have fun with a lot of different colors and see how they mesh well together and come out with a pretty cool project at the end. So I hope you enjoyed the video and learned a few things. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. I'll be happy to answer them for you. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on any tips to refine your skills as a chalk painting artist. Uh, I'm on TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. Come visit me and say hi. I'd love to hear from you. And until next time, it was a pleasure doing this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.